This is drawing graphs where there's more than one section uh, in the domain. So here we've got x from minus 2 to 3 and it's always worth working out before you start what your y is going to be. Throughout this I've got pre-prepared axes but we don't really need axes that go to this distance for each graph. So just looking at the minimum value of this when x is minus 2 uh, y equals 2 so our range here is y is from 2 to when x is 3 y equals 2x so 6 so y is from 2 to 6 so I don't need to go all the way up to 9 here and I don't need to go into the minus axes but because I've already got them drawn I'm just going to leave it as it is so y equals 2 or f of x equals 2 that's a horizontal line starting at minus 2 to 1 so it goes through there. When x equals 1, y equals 2x, so 2. When x equals 3, y equals 6. So I can put that line on there, 3 to 6. And of course it's got a gradient of 2, as you'd expect. So that's just going up with a gradient of 2. And of course I should be using a ruler, but I can't do that on this computer program. In this one, again looking at our range, y equals x squared from 0 to 3. So at 0, y equals 0. Um, and then from then on, it equals up to 9. So y is between 0 and 9. That's the range for this one. Again, it doesn't ask us for the range, but it's sensible to work it out so that you draw the appropriate axes. So between 0 and 3, y equals x squared. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. 3, 9. And then it continues at 9 until x equals 5 up here. So this bit is just the straight line y equals 9 and this bit is a quadratic curve of y equals x squared which looks basically like that, it's not a very good curve I've drawn there. Right, next one, question 3 g of x, it doesn't make any difference that it's called g of x, it's still a function of x and if we look at our smallest value of x, of minus 3, minus 3 plus 3 is 0, so our smallest value of y there is 0 in that part. In this part, 3 minus x, so we need to look out for the smallest value of y is when x is at its biggest. So x is at its biggest at 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. So when it is y at its largest, well, y is at its largest when x is at its smallest here. When x is 0, y equals 3. So y has a range between 0 and 3. Uh, when x is minus 3, y equals 0. When x is 0, y equals 3. And the same is true from the other part of the function as well. So we end up with two straight lines crossing the axes at 3 and minus 3. Question 4, we've now got three regions to think about and this is one where you really need to consider the range of y before beginning. So here our smallest value on the graph is when x is minus 2. When x is minus 2 y is minus 6 minus 1 so y is minus 7 at this start of the graph going all the way up to 3 minus 1, so minus 2, sorry, uh, 2, positive 2, so that's going from minus 7 minus 2, minus 7, all the way up to 1, 2, between here we've got 3 minus x, so a gradient of minus 1 until it gets to 4 
so that's going to be going through these points here and then y equals minus 1 for the remainder up to there so we've got these three segments a straight line segment where y equals minus 1 a straight line between here with a gradient of minus 1 and a straight line from minus 7 all the way up to 2 with a gradient of 3 so that's what my line looks like there uh, the domain of that one, uh, sorry the range of that one is minus 7 up to 2 Again, we're not asked for the range, it's just a good thing to be thinking about it as well. Question 5, again we've got three sections of the graph. Uh, it goes from minus 4, when x is minus 2, y is minus 4. So I can put that in, minus 2, minus 4. Uh, and if we go to the other end, uh, when x is 4, 5 minus 8, that's going to be minus 3 then. So when x is 4, y is minus 3. And then we'll look at all the points in between. So when x is 0, the end of this line, part of the line, when x is 0, y is also 0. 2 0 are 0. When x is 2, y is half of 2, so y is 1. And again we've got a gradient of a half there, so that makes sense. That looks like it's going to be right. And here we've got a gradient of minus 2, so just checking that that's going to work. Gradient of minus 2. And yes it is. So I can complete this graph to make that pattern there. and we can see our range in this case was from minus 4 up to 1 uh, I didn't set this for homework but it's just the next question in the in the book so from this section minus 3 to minus 2 y is minus 4 so that's here uh, minus 4 of course is down here minus 3 to minus 2 straight line next section of the graph is minus x squared between minus 2 and 2 so that's going to be an upward curve when x is 0 minus x squared is also 0 so it's going to curve up to that point um, if we look at some points when x is 1 so in here when x is 1 minus 1 squared is minus 1 the same is true when x is minus 1 so we've got these points and we know it's going to be a curve in there at this point when x is 2 y is 3 lots of 2 6 minus 10 so that's minus 4 again and then it goes up with a gradient of 3 up until it hits the point 4 here. So a gradient of 3 is going to be there, 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 there. And when x is 4, 3 4s are 12, take away 10 is 2, that works as well. So this is our overall shape, and we've just got to put this quadratic in the middle. And then a straight line with gradient of 3 up until y equals 4 y equals 2, sorry, x equals 4 and the range here is from minus 4 up to 2 
looking at question 7, I haven't got that version of the graph on the screen. But we can see in question 7 first part of the graph goes from x equals 0 to x equals 3. So up to 3. And then it's a flat line from 3 till 5. And then again it goes up from 5 up to 7. And if we look at the, so those that deals with the domain of each part. And now we need to look at the function that's happening for each part here. So the function f of x equals, first one is just y equals x first straight line on that graph. Second is horizontal line y equals 3 and the third is going up with a gradient it goes up to 7 so it's going up from 3 to 7 it's going up 4 over a space of 2 so it's got a gradient of 2x and if we think about it's got the point 5 3 on that line and it's also got the point 7, 7 on that line. So if we think about what's happening, we know it's a change of 2x, gradient of 2x. So 2 times x is 10. What do I have to do to get to 3? Minus 7. Does that work for the other one? 2 times 7 is 14. And I have to minus 7 to get back to 7. So yes, it does. So that's my function defined for question 7. But I also, as part of 7, need to state the range of y, which I can do by looking at the graph, and y is between 0 and 7. And finally, solve f of x equals 5. So at 5, I look at what I've got, x equals 5, y equals 3. And that's also true for here. If x equals 5, 2 5 is minus 7, y equals 3. So for f of x equals 5, x equals 3. I think I said y equals all the way through that. I meant when f of x equals 5. So when the result is 5 on the graph, y equals 3. I've got that completely wrong. Take that back. I'm looking for when f of x equals 5. I look on the graph and when f of x equals 5, that's when y equals 5. It's in this section of the graph here, so following this equation. So if 5 equals 2x minus 7, then add 7 to both sides and I get 12 equals 2x. Therefore, x equals 6. And that matches clearly on the graph as well, if you draw the lines in. So that's all a bit abstract without being able to see the graph, but those are the answers to question 7.